We've just seen an example of what we called the tragedy of the commons, where two players had the option of either cooperating and conserving a common resource, or not cooperating and depleting that resource. Now there were two critical features to that example. The first was that cooperation is socially optimal. When the two players cooperate, they get to the maximum social surplus of 150. But if only one of them cooperates, the social surplus drops to 120. And if neither cooperates, it drops to 100. The second feature was that non-cooperation is a dominant strategy. No matter what the other player does, it's in each player's best interest to not cooperate, to not conserve. As a result, we end up in this suboptimal equilibrium, where each player only gets 50, and the overall surplus is the lowest in the entire matrix. Now, any game in game theory that satisfies these two features is called a prisoner's dilemma. And the reason it's called a prisoner's dilemma is because when game theorists first derived this and put it into this form, they thought of it in the context of two prisoners. They've just been caught committing a burglary, and there's absolutely no doubt that they've committed the burglary. The district attorney has all the evidence he needs to convict them. But the district attorney also suspects that they were both involved in the commission of a murder. He just doesn't have enough evidence to prove it, and so he needs them to confess. So the district attorney takes the two prisoners and puts them in separate rooms and constructs a game for them. We'll have prisoner one on this axis, prisoner two on this axis, and he tells each of them the same thing. You can either choose to deny the murder, or you can choose to confess to the murder. Now, when you deny, you are actually cooperating with the other prisoner in covering up the murder. When you confess, you are not cooperating with the other prisoner in covering up the murder. So deny here is equivalent to cooperating with your partner. Confessing is equivalent to not cooperating. Then the district attorney fills in the matrix, and he says, look, if you both deny, then I can't prove the murder. So I'm going to get the maximum penalty for the burglary. And that maximum penalty is five years in jail. So if you both deny, all I can do is get you five years in jail. But if prisoner one denies and prisoner two confesses, then I'm going to use prisoner two as a witness against prisoner one. I'm going to convict prisoner one of the murder and he's going to get 50 years in jail. But as a reward for confessing, I'm going to make sure you only get one year in jail if you've confessed, and I just make a plea bargain with you. Similarly, if player two denies and player one confesses, then player one is going to get one year in jail, and player two is going to get the 50 years, because I'm going to use prisoner one as a witness in the trial against prisoner two. If both of you confess, then we're going to make a plea bargain now, and both of you are going to end up with 25 years in jail. So now we can look at the incentives in this game. And it's a little confusing at first, because here higher numbers are actually worse. They're years in prison. With that in mind, suppose you're prisoner one and you think your partner is going to deny. If your partner denies, then you could get five years in jail if you deny, or only one year in jail if you confess. So you should confess. What if you think prisoner two is going to confess? Then you have a choice between denying and getting 50 years in jail, or confessing and only getting 25 years in jail. 25 years in jail is better, so again, your incentive is to confess. No matter what you think your partner is going to do, your incentive is to, to confess. Confessing is a dominant strategy. The same thing is true for prisoner two. If prisoner two thinks that prisoner one is going to deny the crime, the murder, then prisoner two is going to be in this row. If 
he decides to deny, he gets five years. If he confesses, he only gets one year. One year is better. So he should choose to confess. If he thinks that prisoner one is going to confess, then he's going to be in this lower row, choosing between 50 years in jail and 25 years in jail. Confessing again gives the better outcome. Confessing is a dominant strategy for both. But between the two of them, it would be much better if they both denied because they'd only get five years in jail as opposed to the 25 that they're going to get in jail by both confessing. So the incentives to the game are that it's a dominant strategy to confess, the district attorney will get a confession from both, and they both will end up in jail for 25 years. Now we could think then about what might be a way out of that prisoner's dilemma. If the two prisoners were part of a mafia, that mafia could actually change the payoffs in that matrix. So let's redraw this game matrix. Again, prisoner one on the vertical axis, prisoner two on the horizontal. They have the option of denying or confessing. And the Mafia would like people to never confess. So if they both deny, the payoffs will be what they were before. The District Attorney will make sure they both get five years in jail. If Player 1 denies, the Mafia is not going to be able to change the outcome. The person's going to go to jail for 50 years. But when person two gets out of jail after a year, they could severely punish that person. So the mafia could turn that one into a really bad outcome. Let's call it D for death. They'll kill the person. If person two denies, then person two is going to end up with uh, 50 years in prison. So this should be blue. And person one would end up with only one year in jail. But if the mafia can make sure that when he gets out of jail, he's actually going to get killed, they'll turn that payoff to death. And then if they both confess, then they're going to make sure they both get punished. And so the mafia would say, well, if you've confessed, then both of you are going to end up getting killed by the mafia. Now they've changed the payoff of the matrix. What are the incentives now? Well, if you're prisoner one and you think prisoner two is going to deny, then you're going to choose between five years in jail and death from the mafia. So you're going to end up denying. If you think prisoner two is going to confess, then you choose between 50 years in jail and death. Again, you're going to deny. So by changing the payoffs in the matrix, the mafia has just caused denying to become the dominant strategy rather than confessing. And the same incentives will hold for prisoner two. So prisoner two also will deny and we end up with this equilibrium. Now here between the two prisoners, what's socially optimal is to end up here, not to end up with 25 years in jail each. But the incentives the district attorney has set up will cause them in equilibrium to end up in jail for 25 years each, unless some outside force has changed the payoffs in the matrix, a force like the mafia, in which case it could be that denying actually becomes the dominant strategy.